This is an exploration of SQLite 3 uh, using full text search. I wanted to see how well it behaves when it comes to doing a full text search on a JSON body. In our case, the idea would be to store the entire place's data as a JSON blob on the client itself and do a full text search across the JSON without actually pulling out different columns, which, can, which we can still do, but this was just an exploration of uh, how that would work and what the search terms would be like. I uh, also wanted to explore just using, using that technology before getting it integrated into Xamarin because that will take a bit of doing, especially getting it done um, as a PCL. Uh, it requires a special compile. So, uh, so this is basically the C++ version or C, C version. It's kind of a mixture of both. Uh, we pulled two libraries, the SQLite 3, which I've compiled specially with the full text search uh, configured in, in it. And then this lib uh, Jensen, which is basically a C JSON uh, library, which I've used in the past uh, to good effect. And the test program will always rebuild the database from, from scratch. In fact, it'll if it exists, it'll throw it out and just re-pull in the data um, from places.json. And uh, basically just walks into it and grabs all the places. I have a opening the database here. Here I'm actually deleting it first uh, in case it exists. Uh, and then I create the virtual table for places using uh, FTS4, which allows us the, the full text search indexing. And uh, then I just go ahead and insert the, the places for each. I iterate um, over the JSON object and insert the place. Uh, in, and then under the name here, it's actually not the name of the place, but it's the key. So this, uh, you'll, you'll see the identifiers later. And uh, that's the JSON that we send on down. <clears throat> um, it gets inserted into places, uh, put a little debugging there. And then I have a little interactive, very primitive interactive uh, command line uh, uh, reader that allows me to search. So we can build that um, and run it uh, in, in the shell. For, for testing out. So uh, the way that works is there. See, now it's, it's just inserted all these different places. So, uh, you know, what can we search for? Because it's fully indexed uh, text on the entire JSON blob, we can search for anything we want, uh, be it items on the menu, be it a location, be it the name of the place stuff like that. So you could say, you know, pizza, you could say, you know, so you get a bunch of pizzas back. You can just go for a name. Um, it's all, it also doesn't have to be um, case sensitive. So it's the same thing, lowercase. Uh, we can search for the cuisine type. So sandwiches, and you get a bunch of different places that serve sandwiches. Now that we're only displaying the name of the restaurant, the cuisine, the area and the address. We're not displaying everything about uh, ab about Bongo Burger in this test um, output here. But we can uh, go in. So we have places.json. Uh, we can open that in a graphical browser. Um, if it does open, there it is. Just took a while to load, um, and you'll see this content. This double content is just a the way this uh, utility works. This is not really part of the JSON. Uh, it's content places, and then here you'll see all the keys. Uh, so um, uh, you know the menu. Well, there, that's a null. There's nothing there, but. If we can reach in, we can take a look at, uh, well, this menu is not good either. So let's look for other menus that uh, that are actually set. Oh, wait, that's null. Let's see here, that's null. Boy, I'm getting a lot of null items on the menu. Uh, okay, here we go. 
All right, so here we've got uh, dinner menu, uh, Jap Japanese cucumber. So, all right, so we could look for cucumber or Japanese cucumber in our search. And what should happen is uh, Gotham Bar and Grill should come up because th they have that on the menu. So let's take a look. Well, 27 places came back. Um, hopefully, yeah, there's Gotham Bar and Grill. I didn't know. So oh, what's going on here is, is also we got Japanese and cucumber and it's actually searching. It's in logical or. So one thing I haven't tried yet is, is if we go and quote it, whether, okay. <clears throat> so that's something, you know, obviously that's a user interface question of um, quoting the stuff or, or leaving it separate. Um, we we'll probably, on uh, the underlying implementation, um, quote it in the search term. But I just go to show you, it's like, it, that does seem to work well. Um, and it does have the benefit where you can basically search for pretty much anything and the places will come up um, that seem to be about that. Now, the ordering and preference and how relevant the results are, that's not easily or readily done in this, in this proposal here. Um, but this is... A <clears throat> This is something we'd only really use for if you're in offline mode. If you're in online mode, uh, where you are fully connected to the network, we'll much uh, we'll be using um, Elasticsearch, and we have much more capabilities there. Uh, so this is really a, uh, an exploration around what do you do around search when you are offline or you're in a bad networking situation where the actually talking to servers is just not a, a good proposition. So this is a, a method that I think will work um, reasonably well, uh, <clears throat> especially as restricted to places that are already in your um, go lists uh, so that you know in some sense everything that does come up should be relevant the other downside of this uh, just putting everything into the JSON is, is that if you're looking for common terms so there's uh, there are keywords that we have if you were to look for WG dash dash 2262 this place would actually come up or if you look for uh, images you know every place in the database would come up so images uh, 632 places um, so so these are t terms in the JSON that we are using and it's gonna hit those like if you look for coordinate or address address or cuisine um, I don't think it's a real problem in as such that users are unlikely to do that and I think the benefits of this um, you know, unstructured search, if you will, there, there are some other benefits. Like you could actually search for a phone number and it would come up for free. So if I go look for 6204020, uh, 6204020, uh, that would come up. Now having said that, you know, if it's user were to look for the, you know, if you use dot notation, that wouldn't, that wouldn't show up. Uh, actually it did. Uh, interesting, <laughs> uh, unexpected. Uh, now I'm wondering if you did uh, space, whether we, what, I think we'd get more coming up because there'd be more 620 things, but in this case not. So there's some exploration around um, what, what are all the features, but it is nice that uh, we get so much for free Again, the, the, the counter is, the counterbalance is, is that, well, you know, there are some search terms that will produce hits that don't make any sense. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at with the exploration around using SQLite uh, full text search for our embedded um, wanna go client.